Rebuilding a Stuart Models Twin Launch Model Steam Engine. This is part 14 and I've called it Commencing Reassembly because I couldn't really think of anything better to call it than that. And it sounds better than a continuation of the assembly process of the engine. On screen at the moment I'm fitting a crosshead to one of the piston rods. And no Loctite at all on this, this needs to be removable quite easily. But it has to be a tight fit. And under no circumstances should anyone use pliers on a piston rod pliers will make a mess of the piston rod. What I normally do is use a piece of soft brass like this. Put the brass in the pair of pliers and use the brass as a barrier between the pliers and the piston rod. The brass is much softer than the steel of the piston rod so it doesn't mark it. That's one down and one to go. I'm fitting the second crosshead in exactly the same way as I did with the first and I'm using the brass in the pliers to grip the piston rod to make sure I can get it really tight. I could I suppose use a spanner on the crosshead, but in this case I can get it tight enough just by finger pressure. The crosshead guides are the next thing to look at, complete with this very ornate motion bracket. Sadly the workmanship's gone downhill when the person made these crosshead guides. See if you can figure out what's wrong with them. In this clip I'm giving them a bit of a clean with some scotch Bright. And now I'm trying them in position. Oh, and look, one of them's a little bit wonky. I really am suspicious of this engine because I did receive it as a box of bits. It was not a completely assembled engine. In this clip, I'm tightening one of the grub screws that hold the motion bracket to the upright columns. And what I'm quite interested in finding out is how well the crosshead guides align with the cylinder when the cylinder's put on top of these support columns. The last engine I worked on was a Stuart No. 1, which is quite a large model steam engine. This steam engine is very tiny, and it's quite difficult to assemble it. If I freeze the video for a moment, you can see the problem with the crosshead guides. The holes in the bottom of the crosshead guides need to be countersunk to take the countersunk bolts as shown. The holes at the top of the crosshead guides also need to be countersunk on the other side. This is not a major problem, I can just use some non-countersunk bolts on the other side. When I fully tighten the countersunk bolts that hold the crosshead guides in place onto the motion bracket, things are not as they should be. The left hand crosshead guide is definitely not straight. I'm going to put this on one side for the moment because there are plenty of other jobs I can be getting on with before I confront the crosshead guide problem. For instance, I could really do with mounting the engine to the base. So I'll do that now. Here are the bolts with some nice brass nuts on the top. And this is why I use adjustable spanners. These brass nuts are not the same size. So I now need to look through my collection of spanners and find one that fits the rest of the nuts. And this of course takes time. And once the nuts and bolts are tightened and the base plate is held securely to the base board, everything is fine. I left the ends of the crank web slightly longer than shown on the drawing. But no problem here, the crankshaft rotates perfectly. Believe it or not, this is cellulose thinners that I put into a polythene pot but it's old cellulose thinners because I do recycle it. In this state it's no good for thinning paint, it should be completely clear, but it's fine for removing old paint off components, which is what I'm doing. And while the cellulose thinners or lacquer thinners is doing its stuff, look at this. This is not good at all and explains why the lug got broken off in the first place. This engine is not very well made I'm afraid. And for the viewers who were concerned that I was having a go at people's workmanship, well I probably am really, it's not very good. Look at this. I'm going to have to reprofile these columns altogether and at least make sure that they're all the same length. Another job to do. Right back to the bowl of cellulose thinners, which has nicely dissolved the paint that was in the container to start with, and it's also dissolved the paint on the connecting rods. I'm using an old toothbrush to do this. Just a quick thought before selecting a toothbrush to do this job, make sure that it's not one that's going to be dissolved by the cellulose thinners. You will soon find out whether or not you've selected the correct type of toothbrush. If the end of the toothbrush just goes into a molten blob and falls off into the bowl of thinners, that is not the correct type of toothbrush to use. Once all the paint had been removed from the connecting rods, I gave them a quick polish on the polishing spindle, and in this clip I'm reassembling them onto the crankshaft. And at this point, I must say, these feel really good. I'm not over tightening them, as you can see, I'm using a nut spinner that puts more than enough pressure on. And I fit the other connecting rod in exactly the same way. And once again, I am not over tightening the nuts that hold the big end brasses together. A bit of extra lubrication never goes amiss. 
When assembling any mechanical parts, it's really important to have the correct lubrication and plenty of it. In this clip, I'm putting a couple of bolts through to hold the connecting rod fork to the crossheads. This is only a temporary measure, and when I hold the cylinder firmly onto the upright columns, nothing is fouling, the pistons are not hitting the top or the bottom of the cylinder. And now, it's painting time! Yeah! That's quite enough of that. Painting is not an exciting thing to do. I'm putting a third coat of paint on this cylinder block. And this third coat of paint should be the last one, I think. It's looking okay now. And while you're watching this painting, I can just generally chat about things. I get a lot of questions from beginners asking me, which steam engine do I recommend for a beginner? And I always answer with the same reply. I recommend a Stuart Models Victoria. It's quite a large model steam engine, but can be built on a small lathe. It works very, very well if it's built properly, and it's not small and fiddly like this one. And I'm about to start the series, How to Build a Model Steam Engine, featuring a Stuart Models Victoria. Step-by-step -step instructions how to do it. That's it for now. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.